Hi there everyone, it is currently the 26th of December 2011. I hope everybody out here that celebrates Christmas had a great Christmas out here. But today we're going to be drawing our attention out towards the Bay of Bengal where we have a developing cyclone. Well, the last several days we were talking about this system and thinking it was going to get battered too much by the vertical wind shear here, but it looks like high pressure ridge has ridged in and lessened up that shear. And if we just pull up the shear analysis actually from Sims here, you can see that right over the top of the center circulation about 5 to 10 knots really conducive for development and not to mention if we pull up the divergence aloft you really can also kind of uh, get a gauge on all the uh, good outflow aloft with this system and that's actually down here the numbers indicated in the 20s and in the 30s down here so that's why you have all this convection around this system there is some drier inflow coming in from the south and really wrapping around it that could hinder a little bit of the development but overall the monsoonal trough down here farther off the screen towards the southeast is really feeding into the system and that can be shown on this precipitable water microwave imagery here and see all these areas in the dark red farther off here across the South China Sea, Indonesia and stretching out towards the Bamangal. Well, these are areas of very high moisture out here and potentially up to about 66 millimeters of rainfall an hour actually in some of these areas being indicated or stronger. And that's just over open water, not including or graphic out here. So really, and also in the last couple frames, you can also see this cyclone starting to spin up here and really getting that good cyclonic circulation with it. But I was just talking about the drier inflow here just a second ago. And if you look at the last several frames on this system, you can see some of these shades of yellow and green working around and into the system well I think that it will hinder development just slightly but it's definitely going to be outweighed by the high amount of moisture coming in from the northeast monsoon farther off towards the east so with that being said there is a chance of significant tropical cyclone making landfall here along the east coast of India in the long range and let's look at three different model outlooks here starting with the GFS in the top left uh, no gaps here in the top right and this is the Canadian model or the CMC global here on the bottom and all three of them have it tracking slowly off towards the north actually starting location here is indicated by the sea and then turning towards the west as a high pressure ridge works in its way in towards the north that's really going to buffet the system and keep it down towards the south we all know that cyclones or tropical weather alike really doesn't like to move to higher areas kind of like water flowing downhill doesn't want to run uphill it's going to always want to run downhill well, with this high pressure off here towards the north that's going to keep the system basically on a westerly protection likely making landfall around Chennai. And this is actually what the Joint Typhoon Warning Center is putting out on this system. They're saying a max intensity of about 60 gusting up to 75 knots. That's the equivalent if you're out here in the uh, Eastern Hemisphere or out in the Pacific. It's about the equivalent of a strong uh, tropical storm. But I do think there is a very good potential of this system actually making it up towards uh, typhoon status or the equivalent of typhoon status or a significant tropical cyclone out here with winds sustained of 65 knots or above. But as with the last several tropical systems out here in the entire region I don't think the winds are definitely going to be the most uh, severe impact with this system it continues on this track there is a good chance of some heavy flooding out here in the urban areas where there's poor drainage but also if it does continue on this exact track right here I do want to note that it is highly unlikely storm likely will change track either north or south as we saw in the models just a few minutes ago there really is uncertainty in the exact position of this track at this time but really at this point though this would put that city in here of Chennai in the right front quadrant which is really bad because you have the forward momentum combined with the overall winds with the system and it could produce a light storm surge right near the coast as well but definitely something we need to continue to watch here over the next several days as you can see on here about three to four more days before the system actually makes landfall but some of the outer rain bands actually could be affecting even earlier than that and if we go back to this water vapor imagery here actually you can see some of this water vapor starting to wrap around the system and pushing off towards the west here and already Sri Lanka looks like it's starting to get some precipitation and I actually saw some uh, reports of light rain earlier this morning out in Colombo as well so definitely is the potential and a chance of some rain showers already hitting the area today but if we look at the precipitation outlook using one of those models we were looking at earlier and that is a GFS model outlook here and now we're 
start moving this from Monday out to Tuesday and then into Wednesday and really a lot of the precipitation remains offshore due to uh, dry air inflow coming in from the north and also wrapping around the system so that should keep it, most of the areas rain free like I said areas in Sri Lanka and southern India here could see some light precipitation later today and into tomorrow but really looking at landfall likely on Thursday into Friday good news wind shear likely is going to increase on the system and it should decrease the gradient enough so just after landfall those winds are really going to drastically drop off but like I stated before this is still long range about three to four days out that's long range as far as a uh, cyclone standard so uh, definitely going to keep a close eye on the system over the next several days but as Francis pointed out earlier today, though, really this storm is kind of good news for much of southeastern Asia because it is dragging the moisture out of that monsoonal trough farther off here towards the southeast. So much of Malaysia and Thailand being rain-free today do have some of the diurnal effects out here. But overall, the system is really sucking up all the moisture in the entire region here. So definitely something, like I already stated, that we're going to continue to watch here. But if you want more information on the system, please just visit the website at westernpacificweather.com. And also, if you want some more information on the entire area out here in southeastern Asia definitely go visit that site as well our one of our weather casters Francis put out a really good and in-depth analysis on the entire region out here and lastly our partner at 28storms.com putting out some good updates as well so thanks again for watching everybody oh and last year if you are looking for videos on the Western Pacific please click here we do have our most recent video put out yesterday and also on the tropical cyclone just off of Darwin actually made landfall this morning here is the most recent video on that as well. So stay safe out there, everybody. Have a great day.